Well, let's open the Word of God today. Turn your, open your Bibles to Proverbs 23, and let's get hooked up in prayer. Uh, God, God's got something to say to us today. Father, we thank you for your Word. We ask for utterance, for revelation, for anointing through your Word. Lord, we ask that we receive it in the love in which you gave it, and that we receive it into our hearts, into the good soil of our heart, that it might change us and make us better than we were, make us stronger than we were, and help us to go out and be who you've called us to be in this earth. And as we receive your word, we purpose in our hearts to never be the same again. And we thank you for it in advance, in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs 23 and verse 26. I was... uh, telling a story this morning I had to, I had talked to several of the staff earlier this week and I was talking about heart and uh, in uh, my senior year actually I played football all my life and well all, all my life obviously I haven't played in a lot of years thank god <laughs> but uh, I played all through high school and some <laughs> as long as they would let me go to college <laughs> which was only a semester before they said Ooh, you can't go and make f's <clears throat> but uh um, I was an uh, okay football player. I wasn't bad at all. I, I always played up to enough ability to start. I didn't like sitting on the bench, so I'd almost, I would always exert enough energy so that I could play. So that makes you mediocre, right? So I was probably mediocre. And uh, so uh, my senior year, you know, again, I played up to enough ability so I could start. And uh, my coach unfortunately could see this how many like it when you have somebody around you that knows there's more in you than what you're giving because you need somebody to push you you need someone to push you to a greater level because ability without heart will never reach its its highest goals ability without heart I had the ability but I had no heart and so the second game of the season he took me out after the first series of downs and set me on the bench And man, that made me mad. That made me really mad. And I don't get mad. I I don't get mad. I I mean, you can ask my wife. I don't get mad. For something to make me mad, it had to be something big. And I mean, I've been that way all my life. With God, when I was serving God, when I wasn't serving God, I didn't get mad. I'm a sissy. I don't like to get mad. Somebody might get mad back at me. (laughs) Ooh. Yeah. (laughs) I don't want that. I might get hit. Ooh. No thanks. I got a brother for that. Hit him. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but it made me mad enough to go out and give him my heart, which is what he wanted when he put me in the position. He wanted me to play with all my heart. And when I gave my heart, I became a much better football player, no longer mediocre, and I actually even got a scholarship and played in college, like I said, until my mediocre student life helped me out. <laughs> actually, I wanted to get married. I left college to get married. I can tell you that for sure. And I could have cared less about F's or C's or B's or anything else. I was in love. (laughs) Amen? So that's a good thing. (laughs) And needless to say, I got F's because of it. (laughs) They won't move my transcripts. But (laughs) point being, (laughs) back to the lesson, heart. Heart. Christians that are giving less than, than, than their heart to God are getting less out of their walk with God because they're not walking with him in his ways. They're not knowing who he is. They'll never experience his goodness. Um, This verse right here, Proverbs 23, 26, says, My son, and the very first half of the sentence, give me your heart. What's God saying? He's saying, give me your heart. Why, Why does he want your heart? He tells you right after this, but he says, give me your heart. And until we give him our heart, he's not going to show us what he's going to do with it. Because you can't see him. Before he has your heart, you can't see his ways. You can't see why he wanted your heart. If he showed you why he wanted your heart, you wouldn't be able to see it. Because you've got to give him your heart first. You know, everybody wants to see the plan before they do the plan. God says, trust me, i got a good plan. How many know God's got a good plan? We can trust him. And if you can trust him, you can give him your heart. Anybody ever said you want to do me a favor? <laughs> do you just say yes? Because that's a loaded question. <laughs> you know, 
you better watch if you just say yes. You say, can you do me a favor? Yeah, yeah. could I have your house for a couple of weeks? <laughs> you just said yes. With God, you can say yes. And you can count on that what you're getting ready to do for Him is better for you than it was for Him. The reason He wants your heart is so that He can access your life. Because that is how He accesses your life, through your heart. You know how you got saved? You gave Him your heart. Right? You opened up your heart to receive Jesus Christ into it. That's how you got saved. Amen? That's how He accesses your life. That's how He shows you Him. You can't see God unless you see Him through your heart. You can't see God with your natural eyes. Thomas wanted to do it. Thomas said, I won't believe unless I can see. Right? And Jesus said, that's sad. He didn't say it just like that, but He said, blessed are those who, who believe and haven't had to see. Amen? Why? Because people who believe in Him and don't have to see, they'll see His ways. They'll see His heart. They won't see the holes in His hand and the spirit, the hole in His side. They'll see why there's a hole in His hand and a hole in His side. They'll see why He hung on a cross and, and, and been bled for you. They'll see why He did it. They'll see the love in it because you can't see love in your eyes. You see it in your heart. You want to know the love of God? Give Him your heart. That's how you get to know the love of God. And he said, give me your heart. He said it, I know. And, and let your eyes observe my ways. If you'll give him your heart, then your eyes can see his ways. Remember how important that is. Because he said, he said that the children of Israel, they knew his deeds. In Psalm 103, is that right? Yeah, in Psalm 103, I think around verse 7, it says they knew his deeds. People that only know what God could do will get mad at Him. They will most assuredly get mad at Him because something will happen and they'll say, God, you could have done this and you didn't. Because all they knew is what God could do. They didn't know His ways. They didn't know His heart. They didn't know why He couldn't do what, what they just thought He could do. Right? People that believe that stuff, they're, they're, they're just like the children of Israel. And he said, he said, he said, uh, he, he knew, they knew his acts. They knew what he could do. They knew his deeds. Moses knew his ways. Moses not only knew what he could do, he knew why he would do it. Not that he could do it, he knew why he would do it. Amen? You, you know, did, did Moses say, when God said, stretch out your staff over the water, did Moses say, God, what good's that going to do? Staff on the water ain't going to do nothing. No, he knew his ways, and he trusted him, and because he did, he did what he said. Not because he was just obedient, he knew the heart of God. He was not only obedient, he was willing, because he knew the heart of God, and the heart of God was to save. He said it right before he, did, right before he raised his hands. He said, stand back and see the salvation of the Lord. Had he seen it yet? Well, he must have believed in something he couldn't see right then, didn't he? Glory to God. And he knew, what, he, what did he see? He saw the heart of the Father. And, and he, had, he already had a word from God. And he applied his heart to the word spoken. Look at that in Proverbs, uh, a couple different places in Proverbs. It said Proverbs 23, 12. It says, apply your heart. You know what? Sometimes that's all we need to hear. Say, God, I've been doing this, and I've been doing this. I've been tithing. I've been praying every day. I got my scriptures on, on the bathroom wall. I got them in the kitchen underneath, where, underneath the milk carton. I got them everywhere. And, he say, and they say, God, I don't know what else to do. And he'll say, apply heart. Woo! Man, what a word. Apply heart. Heart takes ability to miracles. Glory to God. Heart. Takes, heart's one of those when you're about to make your last step and, and then all of a sudden heart kicks in. And not only are you not on your last step, you're going another mile. Why? Because you got, now your heart's involved. And when your heart's involved, when you apply heart 
to these things, then, then great things can happen. He said, he said, he said, apply heart to instruction and thine ears to words of knowledge. Why? What's he saying? He's saying, apply your heart to hear, right? To hear with your heart. Don't just apply your heart. Why? Because you can't hear right without your heart. God always talks about doing heart first. What's the number one commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. What's he want? All. You know, when you ask God, you say, well, God, I can't give you anymore. You say, no, I asked for all. You didn't give me that yet. <laughs> well, you guys probably did. Like, people like me, we try to hold some back for ourselves. <laughs> well, God, I don't want you to have every part of my life. I might want to do this. No, you won't want to do this if you'll give him that part of your life. Right? I mean, I'm glad y'all don't have any problem with that. Right? He says apply your heart to instruction. Why? Because without heart, instruction sounds like demands. Right? It's like you'll be, you'll be, playing, you'll be playing Monopoly and you'll be getting mad. What do you mean I got to go to jail? I don't get to pass go. Here with your heart, it's just part of the game. You'll get your $200, put your heart in it. <laughs> instruction. God's got instruction. And in his instruction, he says, you're not going to take it right. You're only going to see your way, your will, your needs if you don't hear it with your heart. It's just like when he says, bring me an offering. If you don't hear that with your heart, you say, God just wants to take some of my money, I guess. But when you hear it with your heart, when you understand God's ways, you begin to understand that He's got a place that He needs you to be, and this is His way to get you there. He's thinking of us. God ain't thinking of God. He's got everything He'll ever need, and His plans are set for, the, for eternity. He's okay. He wants us to be okay now. And he says, apply your heart to instruction and your ears to words of knowledge. Why? You can't hear words of knowledge until you can apply your heart to instruction. You can't hear them. You'll hear them wrong. They'll make you mad. You know, you, you hear people that say, I got mad at God, and they're proud of it. I just got flat angry with him because he, he said this, and it didn't happen, and I did this, and that didn't work, and I just got mad at him. You didn't hear him right. It ain't okay to be mad at God. He's never wrong. What are you mad about, that he's never wrong? He's never made a mistake, and he's never failed you. Now, whether or not you failed him is still up in the air. Why? Because if you think you failed him, you probably still haven't. He leaves the door open all the time. All the time. You think you failed him? Go back to the door. He'll give you another shot. He'll give you another shot. And then he'll give you the ability to do it, and he'll give you the heart to do it. Glory to God. Hmm, that's pretty good. Whew, I didn't say that in the first service. It was good. Didn't know I was going to say it in the second service. Proverb 22, 17. Bow down thy ear, that your ear, that thine. What's a thine? Come on. Say your. <laughs> Bow down your ear. And hear words of the wise, apply your heart unto knowledge. What's he saying? You gotta apply your heart. None of these, you, you, the, the way you apply your heart is bow down your ear. Because if you can hear greater than he can say, your ear is way too high. If you hear it differently than he meant it, your ear is in the wrong place. It's like this, and it needs to be like this. <laughs> I don't know how to put it another way. Right? If somebody said, like, put your ear to the ground, that's where your ear needed to be. Right? What's he saying? He's saying, bow down your knowledge. Bow down what you think you know, what you think you heard, and listen to what I really said. And then hear from my heart why I really said it. You know, people read things like, if you don't choose this, then the curse will come. I'll cause the curse to come. And what they don't see is that he said, choose this because I don't want the curse to come on you. But they hear it like, oh, if I don't do this, he'll do this. No, he doesn't even want you to hear the other part. Before he ever ended the blessing, he didn't want you to listen anymore. 
Why? Because he wanted you to hear that the blessing's there. And you don't have to experience any of this. It's just the other option. There are two options, belief and unbelief. Your heart is doing one of them all the time. And there's only two of them. People say, well, I'm not really believing anything right now. Exactly, you're in unbelief. <laughs> believing nothing is unbelief. There are people that say, I'm agnostic, I don't believe in God. Sure you don't, you're in unbelief. Or what is it, agnostic or atheist don't believe in God? Either one of them, they don't believe in God. What? They're, they're just confused. They believe in God. They do. Half of them are going to call out to him one day. Maybe more half. Why? Because I'm going to keep loving them. Right? Ain't nobody ought to go to hell. Right? It says in the word that a fool has said in his heart there is no God. A fool has said where? In his heart. Just because somebody spoke something doesn't mean their heart was involved. Huh? No. You say things out your head all the time. <laughs> and I do too. And then I say, oh, what was that? Stop that. How many know you can, you can talk without your heart? Right? You can hurt people talking without your heart. <laughs> we won't go any further than that. I'm not going to meddle any further than that, okay? We're going to talk with our heart, our heart that's been reborn by the Spirit of God and been filled with His love. Now, could you say some powerful things that way? Glory to God, you can say some unfailing things that way. You can speak life into somebody else because of what's in you. Because you've given your heart to God. Amen? Glory to God, what a good thing to have given your heart to God. Right? <laughs> You guys still with me? We're, we're believers. We're believers. Because we've given our hearts to God, we have a strength that other people don't have. We go on when others are quitting. We go further when they stop. Amen? We have something in us that's greater. He says the greater one is in us. How did he get there? We invited him into our heart. And we said, take what's there because it surely ain't much. <laughs> and he takes that not much, just like the loaves and the fishes, and he feeds thousands with it. Can you give him your heart? I don't care how much you think it is. It's a lot. I reckon that little boy, he said, well, I've got a couple fishes and a couple loaves here. God took it and fed a thousand, thousand and thousands of people. He can take our little and make it much if we'll give it to him, if we'll give it to him. But he's looking for your heart. That's what he's working through. That's what he's working from, your heart. Look at uh, Psalm 95, 10. He wants, first of all, your heart so that he might bless you because it's through your heart that he blesses you. So he wants your heart. And he's given you a word to believe before he asks you to do an action. He's given you a word to believe. God never sends somebody out without a word. People say, well, he sent Abraham out. He said, go. That was a word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's why Abraham's in the book today, because he went. Right? That's called trust. That's called faith. That's called giving somebody your heart. Blind faith. Why? He believed in his goodness. He had to. He had to. He didn't say, well, you know, there's not much happening here today. You know, things, in fact, is things are going pretty bad. See, that's half the reason Christians want to move or they want to go somewhere else is things aren't going good where they're at. <laughs> yeah, it's not going really great here. You know, in fact, is I don't have much money. My bills ain't paid. Maybe I should move. Maybe you should right after you got money and your bills are paid. God doesn't lead by disaster. <laughs> Ooh, disaster over there, don't go. He'll lead you right into disaster. He'll throw you right up against the ocean with people breathing down your neck with swords, spears, and chariots, throw you right up against it with nowhere to go, and then save you out of the middle of it. 
And you know what will show when you're right up against the shore? Your heart and who has it. And thank God Moses was in command of that battalion or they would have been left back there with Egyptian spears in their heart. Because a man that, that God had his heart was standing over the sea when he spoke. Or will we be that man that has that God has our heart so that we're, when we're in that position, we speak the words of life. We say, hey, it ain't that bad. Stand back and watch the salvation of our Lord. That's us. That's the person whose heart is committed to God and knows his ways. Why do we, Moses knew God had said, I'm delivering these people. He knew this wasn't the end. Why? He had a word from the Lord. And he believed the word. Guess what? The people behind him had the same word. The people standing all around him had the same word. But they wouldn't have went over. What's it say about those people? It says in Psalm 95, 10, it says, For 40 years I was angry with this generation. I was grieved with this generation. And I said, it is a people that err, where? In their heart. Err in their heart. Why did they err in their heart? They have not known my ways. We got to know the ways of God. We got to give him our heart. We got we to let him access our heart so we can access his. Amen? Amen. And when we access his heart, we'll know his ways. The reason they erred in their heart is because they did not know his ways. Amen? If you look at this in the Hebrews, Hebrews 3, uh, verse 12, he talks about those people again. <clears throat> he talks about them again. He says, take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief. What's an evil heart of unbelief? One that doesn't trust God. One that doesn't believe in God. It's one that departs from Him. Well, what happened right after they got across the Red Sea? Huh? Yeah, we're here. What are we going to drink? <laughs> Deeds don't bring faith. Miracles don't bring faith. You can watch a million miracles and they will not give you faith. They can build the faith you already have, but they will not give you faith. Faith does not come by seeing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Moses heard the Word of God. They heard the Word of God. They departed from the Word of God with an evil heart of unbelief. When you are not believing you are in unbelief. You're doing one thing or the other. You're either believing the Word of God or you're not. In this world today, everywhere, every person is either believing or unbelieving. There's not two, you know, there's only one God. It doesn't, and people say, well, these, they believe that there's another. It doesn't matter what they believe. They don't believe. Their belief is unbelief. And, and you know what they would say to that? They'd say, well, that's just what you believe. I'd say, Yep. And I believe that he loves you. And I believe that when you come back to him, you're going to be strong. I believe a whole bunch of things, and I refuse to unbelieve, because if I ever start unbelieving, you're in trouble. What if Moses ever started unbelieving one day? Oh, the whole bunch of them would have been in trouble, wouldn't they? It's not, we don't start unbelieving just because somebody unbelieving comes to us. Right? We're believers. We're believers and we're full of the love of God. We're full of the power of God. And we are going to stick with it until we leave this earth. We're not quitting on one person or letting them go to hell in any way. We're believers. It says, it says that these people let their heart go astray. Astray. How many people want your heart to go astray? Anybody had ever had a stray at your house? A stray? <laughs> right? Stray cats, they're really skinny. Why? Because they're not getting fed good. They're strays. In our house, man, our cat could be as fat as he wanted to be. 
Because he's not astray. If you were not astray from the Lord our God, we have the goodness of life all the time. We are filled with the fat of the land all the time. Amen? We, their, their hearts went astray from him. They went, if they go astray, it doesn't just mean they departed. It means they went to other gods. Where your treasure is, is where your heart will be. They went to a different treasure. What's God, what, what, does, what does the Lord say? Think about Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4 and what, verse 23-ish? This is a totally different service. God says, uh, I'll go up to 21. Okay, go up further, 20. Keep going up until we find the one I like. <laughs> That's pretty close. It says, uh, my son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. What's he saying? Treasure my words. Make them your treasure. Listen closely. Pay attention to what I say. Make them your treasure. How do you know he's saying make them your treasure? Because of the very next verse. The very next verse says, let them not depart from your eyes. And where do you keep them? Right where your treasure is. He says, put my words where you put your treasure. Everything you treasure is where your heart's at. Put my words right there. I want to be first place. I want first place in your life. He's not, he doesn't need first place in your life. He wants first place in your life. Why? Because it's good for you. He wants what's best for you. Him being first place in your life gives him access to be first place in your life. In everything you do. When you make him first place and you make his word first place, his word now becomes final authority in every part of your life. Why? Because now you believe his word in your heart. Why? Because you gave him your heart, you kept his word in what you gave him, and now he accesses his word through your heart, which is built on his love, which means now the word that was already unfailing is less failing than unfailing. <laughs> that makes sense? His word is the word of love, therefore it can't fail. And now it comes through you through the heart of love, which is unfailing. Glory to God. Glory to God. He says, keep my words in your eyes. Why? Because they're life. Why, is, why does he want you to keep his words? Why does he want you to treasure them? Because they're life to you. Not only are they life to you, though, somebody else could find God's word in you. And their life to them as well. It says, go, it says their life to those that find them and to those that find them. You know what? I'm going to make sure that my heart's open so that people can find his word in my heart. Amen? So when somebody comes up to me and they say something, they don't just get a Dave answer. That's right? Because right? you know what Dave answers have? Zero power. But you know what God answers have? They have all power. And they, they are good for life and health to all flesh. Man, somebody could come to you and be sick, and you could say one word of God out of your heart, and they'd be well. It's in you. It's in everybody that has a heart for God. Amen? He said their life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Glory to God. I want to be found in that position. Look at Psalm 27, verse 13. 13? That don't sound right. Yeah, verse 13. This is a, this is a verse that we all know good, right? He, he said, I'd fainted. He, I would have fainted. He didn't say I fainted. He said, I would have fainted. You know, all of us could say that, couldn't we? Everybody in here, at one time or another, you could have said, I was about to faint. And then I remembered. <laughs> I was about to fall down and quit. But you know what? I remembered. I remembered that he said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I remembered that he says, I wish above all things that you'd prosper me in hell. He said, I remembered that my God is good. I remembered. I would have fainted, but then I remembered God's good. And I remembered, I'm going to, I believe. What did he say? I'd have fainted unless I had believed. People that don't believe, 
classic fainters. They're classic. They will quit everything they do. <laughs> yeah, they're, you were one of them. It's much easier to quit than to lose, right? You did. If you quit, you do lose. But isn't that weird how our mind thinks? Quitting. Quitting is not a God idea. Quitting is not of God. It's, it, it, this man said, I would have quit. That's what he's literally saying. He said, I was about to quit, but I believed. Unbelievers quit. Why? They got nothing to believe in. They got no hope. Believers have hope. We have an anchor for our soul. We always have something to grab a hold of. Unbelievers have nothing. If you're falling and there's nothing there, you're falling. But if you're a believer, if you're falling and that anchor's there, you grab hold. And it stands firm. It doesn't pull. It doesn't move. And you don't move because of it. Glory to God. Believers have a rock. Believers have a refuge. They have a fortress. They have strength. Amen? Believers, they, they, they stand and see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Believers do that. The devil's tried to talk us out of it. He's tried to bring religion and tradition. If you'll ever notice religion, no heart necessary. Right? The law was religion. You couldn't put your heart in the law. You just had to do it. <laughs> we had laws in our house. I said, Ramsey, you're not doing that. And she'd go, I as I said. That's a law. Takes no heart. You just do what I say. Right? <laughs> Takes zero heart. Just do what I say. It's not what God wants. He wants people who choose to follow Him, who choose to serve Him, who choose to give Him their heart and believe in His goodness and re refuse not to have it because they've believed. Amen? That's, what, that's, the, that's who we are. You're a believer. I'm a believer. Unbelief is not going to get us. It's not going to get you. It's not going to get me. Amen? I'm not going astray. Are you going to go astray? You got plans to quit? No, it doesn't matter what you're going through today. God has a plan to get you out even if you messed it up. That's what Jesus was. He was God's plan to fix everything we messed up. Glory to God. And God said, I got a plan. And if you mess something up today, don't get condemned. He, he knew who he was getting when he got him. But he also knew what he could put in you if you gave him your heart. And that, then he said, now you've got something greater in you. Go and do something better. Amen? Glory to God. He said, I, I'd have fainted, but I believed. So you can say, I'd have fainted or believed. Which one are you going to do? You got, one, you got two choices, fainting and believing. It's unbelief. What did the children of Israel do? They fainted. What were they doing? They were entertaining other ideas than God's. <laughs> right? They were entertaining what they could see. Well, yeah, I know we went, just went through the sea, but now we don't have anything to drink. We just as well died in the sea. What, what are they going by? Unbelief. They're entertaining other ideas. Think about Joshua and Caleb. What did it say about specifically Caleb? He had a different heart. What, what did he have? He had a heart that was God's. And when God spoke his word to him, he said, this is it. This is all there is. And when the other ten said, oh, but there's giants and oh, no, no, and lions and tigers and bears, oh my. And when they said all that, and Joshua and Caleb, and they said, no, it does not matter what's in the land. The land is ours. Why? Because they were believers. They had a different heart. They had a heart that God could access and work through. Believers have a heart that God can access and work through. And He wants your heart so that He can access you. And when He accesses you, He opens up all of His goodness in your life and through your life. You become a conduit of the power of God. Glory to God. 
You become the love of God in a situation that's loveless. Glory to God. You become the healing power of God in a room full of sick people. Glory to God. And, and just like Jesus, if he can say, do you believe I am? What did he say to the blind man? He said, you think I'm able to do this? You know what the blind man said? He said, yeah. <laughs> and you know what he got? Sight. Yeah. Why? He was a believer. <laughs> Glory to God. We're not fainters. We're not quitters. We are those who stand and, and receive all the good things that God has. Not just because we want good things. People that serve God to get things aren't serving God. They're serving things. The very verse that we were talking about said, said where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And then he talks about the light of the eye, the, the light of the body is the eye. And then he goes down two more verses. And it says, no man can serve two masters. No man can serve two masters. If you're serving someone to get something, you're, you're serving the thing you're trying to get. You're not serving God. You know, I, di I did it for years. Man, my business was going bad. I said, I got to get some money here. I got to seek God for money. I was serving money, not God. I was trying to get money, and I was trying to go through God to get it. Why? Because I knew he was kind. <laughs> Didn't want his kindness. He'd had that part of my heart for that. Yeah. I'm not just going to throw, throw some of my heart out there on the table. Give me some money. That's, that's what people are doing all the time. They're seeking the, the, the hand of God rather than the face of God, and it's in his heart is where you'll find his true goodness. Amen? Amen. And, and when, when, we, when we do things because we want to get something, we're doing them for the wrong reason. Go back to the first and most important commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. In other words, am I doing this out of the love your Lord your God with all your heart? Or am I doing it because I love the money that the Lord my God might give me if I serve him? You are now divided. He can't do anything for you. I know you can't because I did it. And he could do nothing for me. My business went down and down and down. And you know when it came back? When I began to love the Lord my God with all my heart, with all my soul, when I didn't care. When I used to come home and say, Kim, Kim wouldn't even ask me how my day was at work because she knew I was in a hurry to grab my Bible, to get, grab my case. I had a big case full of Bibles. And we did Bible study. And man, I came home as quick as I could get home and I went to Bible study four nights a week. And I could care less about anything else. That business, it was going to either make it or it wasn't, but I was serving God. And I'm not saying I quit working. I didn't. I worked every day, and I planned on that business making it. But I was serving God no matter what happened. I was no longer serving two gods. Amen? Amen? And that's the zeal that he'll put when we give him our heart. I finally gave him my heart. That's all I had to do. <laughs> that's all. If I'd have went to him and said, God, what am I? I've got your verses. I, got, I know your word wants me to prosper. I know all this is true. And he'd have said, apply heart. Apply heart. And once I applied heart, God was able to access my life. And he opened it up, and I began to love people in a way I had never loved. People say, what, you didn't get saved till you were 27? No, I got saved when I was 7. I gave my heart to God when I was 27. People say, well, get, didn't getting saved giving your heart to God? I don't guess so. <laughs> I confessed him as Lord of my life when I was 7. I felt like every day of my life I'd go to heaven. But I didn't trust him or follow him till I was 27. They say, Brother Dave, that messes with my theology. It messes with mine too. I don't know. <laughs> you decide all that junk. I don't know. I know this. I don't want out. 
I want deeper and deeper and deeper. I want his love to be a pit of quicksand, and I'm going to jump in and go all the way under and never come back. And I don't want to become complacent. See, that's the next thing that happens, man. You get excited about the Word of God. You get excited about what's going on. You teach the Bible. Then you start coming to church, and you serve here, and you serve there. And then all you're doing is serving here and serving there. And the devil works his way. He says, well, you're just doing that. Why go to church today? They'll get by without you. It's not about the church getting by without you. It's about you getting by without the church. That's the devil. He's trying. Why? He wants you to pull some of your heart back. I can't, he can't have us giving our whole hearts to God or else the first commandment will be complete. And God didn't put it first because it wasn't important. He knew if that happened, Katie bar the doors. If you love me with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, I have so much access into your life and so much access into others through you that it is going to be crazy good. (laughs) Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Romans 10. I don't know where we're going next because... I haven't even had half the verses on there. They're just in here. See, they're in here. Glory to God. Aren't I glad they're in here? Thank you, Lord. Romans 10.10. 10. It says, for with the heart, what? Where does the man believe? Why does God want your heart? Because that's where you believe from. That's where you believe from. You can't believe from another place. That's where you believe from. You believe or unbelieve in your heart. Unbelief is a form of belief, only it's backwards. Right? It's believing going in reverse. And if you're unbelieving, you are doing... You know what? Things are happening for you, too. If you're an unbeliever... Have you ever... Anybody in here been unbelievers? Man, I had all kinds of things happening. There was some powerful, powerful negative things happening in my life. Man, I was going broke... I was drinking. Man, I was doing all kinds of destructive things when I was in unbelief. Man, my life was a hundred mile an hour in reverse. (laughs) Why? Because my heart was in unbelief and it was reaping the benefits of it. But when we believe, for it's with the heart we believe unto righteousness. It's also with the heart you believe to unrighteousness. Yeah. (laughs) You could say with the heart man unbelieves to unrighteousness. If you have to believe to righteousness, you have to unbelieve to unrighteousness. Right? People say, well, yeah, because you're not believing. Exactly. I know it's a play on words, but it's just true. You are actually doing something. You're causing unrighteousness to to act in your life. When you choose not to believe, you're choosing to be unrighteous. And when you choose to be unrighteous, you have the, the, you reap unrighteousness. We reap the fruits of righteousness. Why? Because we've believed to righteousness. And then we confessed what we believed. Right? What's it say? It says, with the heart you believed, and with the mouth confession is made. So what you do is you believe, and then you speak. And what happens? New man, new woman, woman of God, full of the Holy Ghost, love of God poured into. There's one version that says poured into. That's like, that's like you're a little baby bird and you up and you had your mouth up and God just poured his love in you. Glory to God. Let me forget to fix that. That's really bothering me. You know, that's, I'm a floor guy. That really messes with me. <laughs> Glory to God. He pours His love. This is how you get saved. You believe with your heart. Look at at, uh, Mark 11. Look at Mark 11. Mark 11, uh, 22. 22. It says, And Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. They were asking about the the fig tree, weren't they? They were asking about the fig tree. Well, how'd that happen? Jesus Jesus told them the same thing that the the Bible had been telling you for years. If you have faith in God, anything can happen. Right? He didn't didn't say, 
well, I'm Jesus. Of course it happened. I'm Jesus. <laughs> we got Christians out there trying to say that. You know, people say, man, they got healed. wonder how that happened. Well, I laid hands on them. You didn't do anything. <laughs> Quit that. Be like Jesus. Jesus didn't say he did anything. He was humble. Humble of heart can hear God. Humble of heart can see God. Humble of heart know God's ways. You don't need credit. Jesus said, have faith in God. And then he went on. But he's still talking about have faith in God, right? He said, verily I say unto you that whoever has faith in God, what's he saying? You believe in God. You believe in the, the, the word of God spoken over you and through you. Amen? How does faith come? Hearing. By hearing and hearing by the word of God. You heard the word of God and you, got, and you had faith. What did you have faith in? In God. Why? You heard the word of God. You can't get faith in something else hearing the word of God. But you have to hear the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You got to do both. You got to hear and you got to hear. You know, people say, what do you mean? If you hear, you're hearing. No, he said hear and hear. There was two hearings there. Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. Right? Hearing what? Hearing the word of faith. Word that will bring faith or heard in the word of God. Because if you hear other things, you'll entertain other ideas. Why? They'll bring faith? No, they won't bring faith. They'll bring unbelief. They don't bring faith. People say, well, it's faith in something else. No, it's not faith at all. It's unbelief. You don't get, you, <laughs> faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It does, you can't get faith by hearing the word of Muhammad. Right. You, can't, you can't get faith by hearing the word of Muhammad and, and believing in Muhammad. It, you, it won't bring faith. It'll bring unbelief. Right. Hearing the word of something else will bring unbelief. Yeah. Unbelief is your enemy. Yeah. Unbelief is what kept them out of the promise. Right. Unbelief is what keeps your body sick. And it's not that you're an unbeliever. It's that the devil has lied on God for so many years that we've got this other thing fighting against us. But we don't have to have that anymore. Jesus said, have faith in God. And verily I say unto you that whosoever has faith in God, he'll say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast in sea. Who says that? The person that has faith in God. Don't say it if you don't have faith in God. It ain't going to work. Right? It takes faith in God to say this. You say this with faith in God. Why? Because He's who made you able to say it. And He's who's going to back the words because this is the person that gave you the power to become a son of God. Right? How did you become a son of God? You believed under righteousness. And He gave you the power to become a son of God. Amen? Amen? And because you're a son of God, you have faith in God. And you have faith in God, you say to the mountain, be thou removed. But you don't unbelieve in your heart. That's what he said, doubt is unbelief. He said, if you say to that, don't, you don't unbelieve in your heart, but you believe in your heart. Don't unbelieve, but believe. Right? He's not just saying, don't doubt what you're saying. He's saying, don't unbelieve. Don't unbelieve what? Your faith in God. God said, say, if you have faith in me, you can speak to mountains. You want proof? One day somebody preached the word of the gospel to you. And you believed that word. And you confessed Jesus Christ right after you believed that word. And the mountain of sin was removed out of your life. And you became a new creature in Christ. You moved a mountain by, by confessing Jesus Christ as Lord. You want to move mountains? You can move mountains. You, you, you may be sick today. And you confess the stripes on Jesus' back are your healing. And the mountain of sickness has to move. Glory to God. The mountains that are before us, they are movable by faith in God. If we don't unbelieve in our heart, but we believe in our heart that those things which we say shall come to pass, we'll have whatsoever we say. How many believe you confessed Jesus and didn't get saved? 
Anybody in here believe you didn't get saved when you confessed Jesus? No, because it's as certain as God's Word. When you confessed it, the mountain moved and redemption moved in. And glory to God, you became a new creature in Christ, able to do all things by His grace. Glory. We move mountains. We move mountains. If you have a mountain of debt, find the Word of God and put it in your heart. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you'd prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers, that I'll meet all your needs according to my riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Find that Word and move that mountain. But it starts with have faith in God. Don't unbelieve, but believe, and you'll have whatsoever you say. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. We serve a good God. He directs our path in the right way when we know His ways. Because when we know His ways, we're not stepping off. Think about the very verses we started with in in Proverbs 4. He said, keep it in the midst of your heart, right? Because it's life to those who find it, health to all your flesh. And then then He said, be diligent. Above all, guard your heart. Above all, everything else you do, guard your heart. Why? Because that's where God's working through. Guard your heart. That's where He's working through. And when you guard your heart, you, you keep the enemy from accessing your life. Why? Because out, why does He want you to guard your heart? Because out of your heart flow the issues of life. Not the issues of death, the issues of life. And if you don't guard your heart, it will, it will out, out of it will flow the issues of death. Right? Out of a good man's heart came what? Out of an evil man's heart came what? Evil. There's scripture. I ain't just talking. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. We're greater than we know when we give Him our heart. We're bigger than we can see when we give Him our heart. He accesses us in a way that will change the world when we give Him our heart. He directs us in paths that we don't even know when we give Him our heart. What's He say? If you keep on going, even in the, in the, in the verses I'm reading, what's He say? He says, he says don't, don't let your eyes look at other things. So he's saying, don't get, entertain other ideas. He said, keep your eyes right before you. Why? You already got the answer. That's like somebody saying, two plus two is four. And you're like, yep, I see that. Well, there's a five over here. Ooh, whoa, six. Four and a half? What? You, you can get all kinds of ideas. It's not going to change two plus two. What's he saying? Your destination hasn't changed. Stay on course. It doesn't matter what's happening to your right or to your left. Stay on course. It doesn't matter what the doctor said here, what the nurse said here, what the banker said here, what your kids did here, what your wife or your husband did here. It doesn't matter. Your destination never changed. You're on His course. Guard your heart and you'll get to where you're going. Amen? Guard your heart. He says, watch your mouth. Watch your eyes. Watch your step. What's he saying? Don't step out. Guard your... Why why would those things... What's this got to do with my heart? Because I'm stepping out of his will. I'm stepping in and out of his will and then wondering why everything isn't going perfect in my life. (laughs) Right? Right. Why? Because I want to keep a little piece of my heart. Come on, baby. (laughs) Take another little piece of my heart. (laughs) That's for you. (laughs) I don't want the devil to have one more piece of my heart. I want God to have it all. I want to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. I believe that I will see it every day of my life. It's the salvation of many. It's the healing of many. It's the deliverance of many. It's the love that's poured out through you and me. That's the goodness of God. And it's here in us, and it's here for us, and it's here through us. And as we believe God, and we refuse not to believe, 
We'll have the goodness that, that He intended for us to have. And we'll do the things that He intended for us to do. We'll be the ones that inherit the land, not the ones that went astray. Glory to God. I'm not going astray. I got any strays in here? No strays in here. We're going to stay the course. Our destination hasn't changed, and our love for people is through and from God, and we're not quitting. Amen. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I had three pages of notes today. I didn't get through any of them either service, but I think I got through half of them in both services. <laughs> Glory to God. He's helping us. He's helping us. We give Him our heart. We give Him our life. We trust Him with who we are, knowing He'll make us way more. I don't want to be mediocre. I don't want to be a Christian that's just okay with coming to church on Sunday and going home. I don't want to be somebody that doesn't have the answers when somebody needs it. I don't want to be mediocre. I, don't want, I was a C student all my life because I didn't care. I care now. I'll not be a C Christian. I'll not be, and people say, wow, you got C's? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, without trying. That was why I did it. I didn't have to try. It takes no effort to be average. God said, be diligent. Why? It's going to take effort. It's going to take effort. You're going to have to fight your flesh every day. It's going to take effort to be above average. It's going to take effort to be excellent. Excellent is love, right? Anytime you hear the word love, it's excellent. And if you want to be excellent, it's going to take way more than average. You're going to have to put something into it. People say, oh, I don't have any more time, Brother Dave. I don't know what I... you got time. Well, I work nine to five, and you know, then I got to come home to family. And you know what? I got accused of missing my whole daughter's childhood, and I don't remember missing any of it. <laughs> got quiet on me. I didn't miss any of it. God made my time just the way He needed it to be, and I, I'm very happy with how He did it. He told me years ago when I started teaching every night. I'd come home from work and I'd leave and people kept saying, well, you don't spend any time with your wife. You don't spend any time with your family. You know, you know entertaining other ideas. Why? Well, you've got to give part of your heart back. You know, well, that's my family here. God, give me my family part back. And I need my family part back, you know, because I can't give you that part because I, you know, you gave them to me. You hear that all the time. Well, you gave them to me. You must have intended. God can take care of them if he gave them to you too. And the best way for him to take care of them is you doing what you're supposed to be doing. Because if you're trying to take care of them, they're in bad shape. If, if you're their source, they're limited severely. <laughs> I didn't entertain other ideas. God told me that moment. He said, you may lose quantity of time, but I will give you quality of time. And our time together is precious because of that we don't you can't lose anything giving your heart to God it's not possible it is not possible we're giving our hearts to God I'm giving mine I'm not going backwards backwards wrong direction backwards is what unbelief does I'm going forwards anybody else going forwards in here today